In data visualization, we often read data from somewhere, we filter the data, post-process it, compute some statistics and finally plot it. And we'll, we call this the visualization pipeline. And in this video, we will discuss how to arrange and store the data in a convenient and robust way for data visualization pipelines. On this slide, I put an example of storing the data in a spreadsheet. This is an example data set where we observe some Arctic species at three observation sites on Svalbard. Apologies to biologists, but this, I just wanted to have a very simple example. And here, different species are on the left. The columns correspond to observation sites. Note that we also use some color coding, red and blue. Red represents multiple observations of the same animal. Blue was some problem with the camera. What problems can we anticipate? I recommend to pause the video here and to think about how this can be problematic. One problem may be the format or limited interoperability with other programs. Storing data in spreadsheets can be error prone and uh, there are examples where wrong statistics were computed in high profile papers because the authors did not drag the mouse far enough. More importantly, this particular data layout can be difficult to parse by scripts and thus difficult to automate. Also, it is not in tidy format and it may be difficult to extend and more about that later. Let us focus on the data structure, not the tool. On the left side, I show three examples of arranging the data. Top left in a very compact form, below a table where species are arranged in rows and below that where species are arranged in columns. And why is this data structure messy? How can these three examples be problematic for automated visualization? In the compact representation, we would have to somehow divide at the comma. And what if we later decide to add more species or more observation sites to the dataset? Then we need to adjust the visualization pipeline to read additional columns. In the so-called tidy data format, we arrange the data differently. The columns are the variables and the rows are observations. The order of the rows does not matter. And one big advantage of the tidy data format is that we can extend the data with more species, more sites, without modifying the plotting scripts. And this is the recommended form for storing data. However, this, is, this does not mean that this is ideal for tables in presentations or publications and more about that in a different video. Which file format should we use to store the data? Here I list a number of standard formats, CSV, JSON, GeoJSON, NumPy arrays and other formats. We should definitely strive for using standard formats. Don't invent your own data format. And one of the simplest ones is CSV, comma separated values. The file consists of header line, and each value is separated by a comma. And this is often a good choice. Most visualization tools can read CSV data. Often we need to visualize data sets that contain inconsistent or missing entries, like in this example. Note how the date formats are inconsistent and also the university is written in three different ways. And one row is in missing uh, an entry. And data cleaning is the process of removing inconsistencies. Tools such as OpenRefine exist that can help you with data cleaning. This does not have to happen manually. Few words about uh, the folder organization. There is not the one right way and the example to the left is only a suggestion. We have arranged the project with subfolders. There is a data folder, a manuscript folder. There is a folder for figures and organize them to be understandable by others and your future you. If you win the lottery today and decide to leave academic research, make sure your research group can still find and understand all related files. This is essential for reproducibility. Add a license file to make the data and scripts reusable by others. And others can be you in a future job or in a different research group. Where to store it? Store the, store the visualization script or notebook and the data in a repository under version control, for instance, GitHub. Get a persistent identifier on services like Zenodo or Dataverse. If the data is too big or it is sensitive data, you may need to store it elsewhere, but consider providing a smaller example dataset 
so that others can reproduce the plots. Storage for big data sets or sensitive data are outside of the scope of this video, but I invite you to check other videos where we uh, discuss this question.